this Albania travel video, we'll be heading to Vlora, the most underrated beach destination of Albania. But first we need to find a way to get there from the city of Duras. We're leaving Duras now and we're making our way to Vlora. We've been told that there are mini buses that come through on the main road going from Tirana to Vlora. We're just waiting here just off the bridge and hopefully one will come soon. Okay, so we've been waiting for about half an hour now and a person who was waiting at the bus stop with us uh, offered us a lift instead. So he said he, he's got his car nearby and that uh, he wanted to take the bus because he just wanted to uh, write stuff on his phone. So um, not 100% sure about this, but we thought we'd give it a try. So if someone finds this phone, <laughs> this, this was our thinking. We just arrived at Flora and our trip was a little bit different to expected. So we got talking to someone else who was waiting at the bus stop with us and he actually had a car. He was going to take the bus but he thought if there were three of us and we could share the petrol money then that would probably be an easier way to go. So we got a ride with Eddie. So we had a great one and a half hour trip to Flora, chatting to Eddie, learning about his country and sharing our experiences. The public transport in Albania is a little bit different to a lot of other European countries. It is quite informal in a lot of places. So you do have public buses and minivans that will take you between major cities and towns throughout the country. But in addition to that, there's also a lot of people who have their own private vehicles and will offer you lifts to places as well for a fee. They're usually a little bit more expensive than the public buses or the mini buses, but not too much. And the benefit is you get a much more direct service and you can go basically whenever you want. You share the transport with other people often. It's a great way to go around the country. We have used this informal transport in private vehicles a couple of times in Albania now. So firstly, we used it to arrive in Albania from Montenegro, going from Ulsind to Skodra and that was a really seamless experience and now we've used it to come to Vlora and again it's fantastic it's a way to meet the locals it's convenient it's fast and it's reasonably affordable welcome to our humble abode here in Vlor so it's time for the tour now, first of all, we've got our own balcony, which is quite nice. Uh, you've got a nice view of the neighbors. We're on the eighth floor, which is pretty high up. And I believe this is a new building as well. So the apartment's really nicely decorated. You've got a really nice couch to watch the TV on. And then we have our kitchen. We've got pretty much everything you need. You've got an oven, sink, and of course, a big fridge. There's this fridge is really really big so which is good and you've got our bottled water now one of the things in Albania that you need to be mindful of is that you don't drink the tap water yeah so we read up and uh, the government in Albania says you can drink the tap water but locals don't they prefer to be safer and drink bottled water and we generally try and do what the locals do so if the locals don't think it's safe we prefer not to drink it either. We've got our own water filter that we bring with us. It's really compact and it allows us to just filter water on the go, which is really handy. Mm. So we'll put a link in the video description if you want one yourself. One final thing about the kitchen that we really like, which we've seen in the Balkans, but not too, too much else, is that you have these cabinets with your plates, but there's also a drip tray. So you don't need to dry your plates. You just put them straight up on the rack and they just drip dry themselves. I've seen other places that don't even have a floor here and so it just drips right onto the sink. So that's very efficient. So we like that, that's a pretty cool feature. What I really like about the bedroom is the very ample storage space. So you can see this whole big wall of cabinets here, which is very handy. Even at your own TV in the bedroom, which we don't see very often, so that's nice little feature. Bathrooms in Albania generally have a bidet. We've even seen them in 
restaurant bathrooms as well as in hotels and private accommodation. So pretty much everywhere has at, at least a hose if not a full bidet. I think it's because of the Italian connection that Albania has with Italy because bidets are very popular in Italy and they're very popular in Albania and we really haven't seen them elsewhere in Europe. Also a washing machine, so very, very very handy. handy. So we're staying here for two nights and I'm looking forward to making the most of this place. Yeah, so it's, it was really quite affordable as well. So each night's under 30 euros. So as you can see, it's a really nice apartment and for not, not too expensive either. So we're gonna have a great time here. So lunch today is at Sofra e La Croix and it's a great traditional Albanian restaurant. Look at this spread. So this is the namesake La Croix, which I believe, it looks, I think it's like a little pie or pastry pie with cabbage on the inside. And we've decided to have a vegetable fair today. So we've got the grilled vegetables here. So there's bell pepper and eggplant as well as zucchini. And then we've got the pickled vegetables. Looks like there's some stuffed cheese in there too. And finally, we needed a, a little bit of cocktail there as well. So I'm going to try the La Croix first. This is such a massive serving. I think it said it was a family pie. Ah, family pie. That makes a lot of sense. Yum. Oh, I'm here. You look there. <laughs> so it's like a pastry. It looks a little bit like burek in a way. So there's cheese on the inside as well as spinach by the looks of it. Oh, that's really nice. The cheese gives it a nice salty flavour. Mm. Oh yeah. I really like this La Croix. Just eating through this La Croix, we found that half of the La Croix is spinach and half of it is tomato. So that's really, really cool. And this La Croix is so delicious. Cocktail, one of my favourites as well. So, one thing I've really gotten into is having yogurt with meat. You don't typically do that in Australia, you have tomato sauce with it or ketchup. So having yogurt with meat's really delicious. It just it goes quite well together. Oh yeah. Oh that kofta's really nicely seasoned. And, and it just goes so well with the yogurt. I don't know what it is but it's it's really nice. I'm gonna try this village pickled salad. So it looks like it's bell pepper with cheese on the inside. This cheese, it's just like a cottage cheese. The bell pepper, it tastes like an all bell pepper. This doesn't feel too pickled, but I think this other stuff, I'm not sure what it is. It actually looks like green cherry tomatoes. Mm. That's pretty good for green. Yeah. Uh, spinach and cottage cheese. Spinach. Ah, tomatoes, Ah, and tell me, dear. Um, tomatoes? Tomatoes. 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 Spets cheese. Ah, spets. Yeah. Spets cheese. Spetsa. Spets. 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 Tell me, dear. Okay, so I was right. So that is tomatoes, the green tomatoes, and yeah, you've got bell peppers with cottage cheese. So I was on the mark there too. Grilled vegetables are also a really popular side dish to have in Albania. So you typically get spetch or bell peppers. You also get eggplant and uh, we've got zucchini in this instance as well. Yeah, so this looks really nice and healthy. There's certainly much more to Albanian cuisine than just meat. So the owner's also given us some braki and you say Roho Ritie. Roho Ritie. Yummy and strong. <laughs> that was a fantastic meal. So the owners were so lovely. It's not too often you come across five-star Google rated restaurants and this restaurant really lived up to that reputation. So when you're in Vlaw, make sure you check out Sofra e La Clorit. They're awesome. Two other restaurants we really enjoyed were Sophie's Cafe in the Old Town and Taverna Canage. Sophie Cafe is a very successful Albanian cafe chain and they have an amazing array of drinks to choose from as well as delicious desserts. Taverna Canage was another great local Albanian restaurant. 
It specialized in meat dishes and was outstanding value. We paid only 850 lakh for lunch for the both of us, and this included grilled lamb, grilled cheese, salad, and bread. Well, we're just a few hours into our time at Vlora, and already I am just loving it. We've had possibly our best meal in Albania already. Yes, that was delicious and great hospitality as well. And now we've found ourselves a wonderful stretch of sand, which is fairly unpopulated at this time of year. And there are deck chairs and umbrellas if you want them, but they're just about three rows of them along the beach, which I think is classy and not too over the top. Yeah, and there's plenty of space just to get your own bit of space or your own towel or your own uh, hitch and umbrella. It's yeah, just right, right balance. Yes, definitely. And how is that view? I really love this area. It's just so pretty and I'm really loving the vibe here. We really like this promenade in Laura. So it's the main street, I believe. And we're making our way down to the old town. So there are a couple of monuments to have a look at, a couple of cool mosques. Yeah, I just really like this area. It's just really leafy. You can see around. There's all these really nice restaurants and cafes too. It's a really nice looking area, hey Jay? Yeah, um, so we're on our way to the bus stop because we want to figure out how to get to our next destination, which is Hamara. And we found that the transport in Albania is a bit more informal. There's not a lot of information online, so you really do need to investigate a bit yourself mm -hmm. or ask your accommodation host. Yeah, we found that's, that's probably the best way to do it. You just ask your host where to go and yeah, they should point you in the right direction. We've had success so far and we're just going to do an extra bit of due diligence this morning just to make sure there are no hassles tomorrow. Our first stop for the morning was to take a look at the Muradier Mosque. This historical landmark was built back in the 1500s and still stands to this day. So this is the Independence Monument of Albania. Albania declared its independence in 1912. Now this area is currently under construction, but it looks like it's going to be a continuation of the promenade area. It's a beautiful area, nice open space. We've got the flag over there as well. So I think I've found the place we need to go. So behind me is Rusi Tours. They have buses. They go not on Sundays it seems, but on either 12 or 1 most days. And then you can see over here, there's also some vans that go to various places around Albania as well. Just across the road from the National Monument and the, the Rusi Tours, you've got the old town of Vlora. And it looks really pretty. I really like the colors and the stone buildings. Yeah, it looks really yeah. nice. I found Vlora looks really livable. Like there's just so many cafes and I think the city's really well planned out. It looks like there's a lot of really nice open boulevards and it's really easy to get around in. Very great for cycling and for walking and yeah, just beautiful. The old town is compact and charming. So lots of great restaurants, really nice sunny vibe, very nice and neat and clean. And I love these little mobile things all above us. It's so pretty. And I really like the colors of the buildings. That's really pretty. We noticed a green space on top of the hill overlooking Vlora and this appears to be a war memorial and a cemetery for people who have died in combat. Most of the graves are from 1943 and 1944. Uh, there are some from 1942 as well as in the 90s where there was quite a bit of political unrest in Albania. From here you can also get some of the best views of Vlora and you can even see out to the water. We've 
made our way up onto a vantage point here. I, it's called Cousin Baba. So there's a shrine just over there, and we're at this rooftop bar, which has an amazing view overlooking Vlora. So we're walking along the Vlora waterfront area now, and it's just such a lovely area. It was constructed recently with the help of financing by the EU, and just look at it, it's just lovely. Yeah, we're headed to the beach right now. It's only a couple of meters away. And what's really cool is that the backdrop is this really big mountain as well. It's really quite scenic. So we're on the beach now. It goes on for miles. So what is great about this beach is that it's not over cluttered with beach umbrellas and beach lounges. There's plenty of space for you to find your own spot to just enjoy the beach. beachfront area there seem to be a lot of high-rises but they all look pretty new so how do you rate Vlora Albania I reckon it's a solid four buckets out of five yeah I agree I really liked it the old town area is really pretty the wide boulevards are really nice and I really like just the infrastructure around the town it's just the amenities are really nice. It's, I think it's just right. It's not too overdeveloped. Yeah. The beaches have enough space for everyone. It's just not overcrowded. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. And the restaurants and the cafe scene here is just phenomenal. So everywhere we've gone has been really, really good. And the prices seem to be cheaper than the places to the north in Albania that we've been to so far. Yeah, and even supermarkets and green grocers, they've been much cheaper than Tirana. Oh yeah, the cherries. The cherries are amazing here. We highly recommend that you put Vlora Albania on your bucket list. We hope you enjoyed our video about Vlora. If you did, make sure you give it a like and leave us a comment. Now, next week we're off to the lovely beachside town of Himara, so make sure you subscribe to stay tuned. We are Bucket List Travellers. See you next time.